Hello everyone, another day and another new tutorial from me. And uh, today we're going to actually model a CGI mechanical pencil. It's pretty cool, right? Uh, let's get bring the reference image in. Hit Shift A, uh, add an empty, and we're going to go to the image. And then we're going to flip the image to our viewport. And then we're going to kind of add bring our reference image uh, and by the way you will be able to download this reference image uh, in the YouTube description link below uh, so it will be fine later when you want to do it yourself okay cool and we are we need to definitely need to bring down the opacity because uh, we all we need is just general shape of this pencil and the brightness too too bright. We don't want to do that. So when you actually start learning how to do modeling, so you really want to know what's the key thing that you need to understand when you model anything. And for beginners, this is kind of pretty simple shapes and uh, basically it's kind of cylinders, different uh, white. And then the, the tricky part is probably in this part is because it has certain texture on it. We will all go through that later in the, the next tutorials when we're going to do our uh, materials. But so far we just need to model the shape out. So, okay, so let's get started. Basically cylinder, right? We can just bring in a cylinder to start with. Uh, let's go the mesh and the cylinder. It's 32 usually I think was kind of too much, but uh, depends on how you see the things. I think 32 is fine. Uh, you can change it to 18 if you want, or worse, uh, or even less. But I'm just pick doing the 18 for this time, and just gonna scale down, hit S, and uh, we can actually kind of uh, adjusting the. The reference image trying to make sure it's everything is centered. So grab Z, bring it up, Let's see, and just go up a little bit. And we're gonna do Alt Z to go to the X ray mode. You can see everything. I think we might be need to, I think it should be fine, right? Yeah. And then we're gonna go to the edit mode. Now we're gonna move the Reference in, in, reference image up a, a tiny bit. We want to go let's start from here. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So basically, I, usually my my way to modeling stuff usually is some textures that it looks different textures. I usually kind of model as a separate mesh. So that in that way, I'd be easier to do the texture. But for this guy, for this part, I'm probably gonna model this as a one unit. And then I'm gonna do the texture later on, um, utilizing some layer skills to getting uh, two different materials in one mesh. But in typical, typically, I will do each materials in different in the in the, as a one individual mesh. So I'm go, going to do this one uh, at the beginning uh, as a separate one. So let me move this one to grab back a tiny bit. Yeah, should be fine. Back to the solid view, and then let's go to the tab and uh, grab this thing up. Pretty easy. And I'm just gonna put it in a little bit further so we, this thing can stick in uh, a little bit. Z. And uh, for for those of you who know that supposed to be having some pencil core and um, something going on inside of it so this is not really supposed to be a cylinder because it has the top right it has the oh, it has the top on the side on the top a uh, top face on this on the on each side so we don't need that all we need to we basically need to make it as a tube right so what we can do here so i need to do some change real quick because you know this is something happened very common so the default view port it was using 50 meter lens so we want to get a change to the 110 that's my preferred focal lens so if I'm zooming in and out it'll be easier to kind of see the small details earlier only 50 it doesn't allow me to kind of zoom in right so it makes sense okay so I'm going to do that um, and select the top face and hit E S and 
hit the E, a Z, just kind of Z scroll, uh, kind of extrude it inside of it. And then let me see the, yeah. So see, that's what, I, what I'm working with, a tiny mesh. It has some issues with the, with each faces. Anyway, so then I'm gonna do select these two faces and that's how you punch a hole. You select these two faces and then you're gonna hit the uh, a bridge. I think this is called bridge loops, loop a bridge. Let's do search F3, bridge, yeah. Bridge edge loops, so do that. So now it's supposed to be, if we go to the front view, it's supposed to kind of punch the hole in there. Yeah, it's not really perfect, but for the purpose of uh, of this, it should be fine. And I can add a subsurface modifier, and then adding a, another loop, loop cut. Another one, and it should be fine. And also, this part considered as the the smallest details of this pencil, and uh, it is supposed is already built the way it's supposed to look like. But honestly, no one really seeing the details out of it when you finish this whole product. But we just trying to get things right. Uh, anyway, let's get a start. Uh, get a start to the other parts, and then let's hit N to close the sidebar, side menu, and add another cylinder. Uh, okay, cylinder, and scale down, and move up. Z and to Alt Z go to the wireframe mode and the tap and uh, go to the edit mode and hit one vertice. So we select the top one, grab Z, move up, and this one hit S, scale down, and hit Z, grab Z, kind of grab down here and uh, scale down a little bit. And hit E and extrude it down here. Hit Z, do right here and scale down. And then we're gonna add some loop cut. Okay. And I want to do the bevel. The bevel I feel is using a bevel instead of adding more loops cut, it's just gonna be more nice curvature, you know? So I can do a, a double G quickly slide down, hit the bevel, and you can scroll your, uh, scroll your mouth wells, kind of getting how many loops you want. So I'm thinking this should be fine. And uh, for this guy, um, grab Z, we can uh, continue, excrue. Here and sides up. Easy, go up, continue. Scale, sides up. And uh, in here, I'm gonna actually bevel this again. See, that's gonna give some nice, beautiful curvature over here instead of apply the subsurface modifier and then manipulate. That takes forever. That's kind of my tricks that doing things like that. And then we're gonna do that and hit E, Z, and uh, scale down here. And hit E, Z, up. And then to me, note, it lets you uh, pay attention. So this part is a separate, separate mesh. So what we actually modeling right now here is interior part of that and this is also going to be another one actually just kind of we can consider we can consider this part the this white plastic one and the down here is is the same mesh so you can you can actually just do it in that way but we definitely going to uh, to model this grip part and to be a separate mesh uh, okay so let's go hit e and z 
I'm just gonna put there the white is it looks right about right and I'm just gonna model this part of the, the details out okay so grab Z come down here and select this whole part and hit control B to get a bevel right just a little bit you know and um, Z and bevel to C yeah it's got a little bit smoother and I can add another loop cut here to kind of balance because we want to have a nice uh, even grid look when we're building our mesh uh, okay so now what we can do here uh, we can go back to the solid mode we can actually apply a, a subsurface modifier hit control 2 with two levels and then you can see here it's already been applied it's a shortcut key and then we're going to do a shade smooth right click shade smooth and uh, yeah so far so good and we probably want to tighten up for this part so what i'm going to do here is go into the edit mode and then add a loop cut let's do a solid view great yeah not too bad not too bad and then here seems like it's have actually supposed to can curve it out uh, then what I can do here select this loop let's scale up and then these are really not actually what I'm wanting to select all these uh, these loops and scale shift Z to just only scale down the X and Y axis we don't want to mess up with the Z again so for that I'm going to dissolve the edge kind of get the shape correct you can see the shape right yeah so now it's much better and it looks like the way it's supposed to be uh, again these things definitely need some time to tweak it um, this tutorial is not a you watch me how it works it's just trying to demonstrating how the things get done and then you you definitely need to put your time to to practice uh, with it and then yeah yeah set so I think so far good yeah okay cool and definitely we don't want to have this shape in the back end so what we're going to do next we are going to uh to continue model the thing and to drag this thing all the way up here and you know this is not a cylinder it's supposed to be a tube so we are going to select the top and hit e scale and e scale and I don't know the thickness of this uh, pencil, but I just probably gonna assume it's somewhere. I mean, guesstimate it and uh, E S. I think that should be fine. That looks like hmm, like this. And then we are going to extrude down. Yeah, it doesn't need to be all the way down, but it just just need to be there uh, and have a pretty nice edge on the top. And I'm going to do E to do a bevel uh, support edge and uh, E, S. Yeah, you see what I did? Yeah, got a, a support loop and then get that done. And again, no one will see that, what's going on inside. But we are going to be, we are need to have them anyway. But you can see here the coverage doesn't look very tight and neat. So what we, can, we need to do is we need to kind of adding a support loop inside of the 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 tube okay to make it looks better yeah like that so we're just gonna make bring it up and we, if we're going to the solid mode now yeah it looks nice right yeah we can even adding a solid loop cut uh add a loop cut to the back side to the outs outside and then um, yeah should be fine with the body okay so we are done with the, the major body part and the next thing we want to do we can actually hide the thing 
then we can actually model this hand grips part. Uh, this is pretty easy compared, pretty simple. You don't want it to make it look so complicated. Uh, of course, a lot of people think, well, how can I make this mesh to having this certain texture and also maintain this uh, a, a glossy and smooth surface and strips in, in between that? Well, what you can do later, you actually just using a texture and uh, to kind of get it done. You don't have to make everything made in, in mesh, you know? So that's kind of a way to solve problem. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to add in a, a mesh uh, cylinder again. So this time I want to have more vertices. So I'm going to do 32. And because I since I'm going to apply a, um, a texture later. So I just want to make it look nice and neat. And grab a Z here. And scale Z. Let's go to wireframe mode and just kind of get things right. Hmm. You know, when when doing tutorials like this, my biggest challenge is the I don't have a lot of time to edit this entire tutorial so basically you will see a lot of flaws and uh, things going on here is is I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to kind of really uh, spend more hours to edit this videos I really want to pass my message to all of you and to to show you how the things get done rather than to do all these fancy editings and uh, and you know in May seems pretty nice to watch but it, it doesn't really worth my time and yours to kind of just see what's going on. Uh, I think I'm trying to produce more content to you, to you guys at the same time. Uh, it needs to be cost effective, right? So what I'm doing now, I'm actually kind of select the top phase. Well, I'm, let me make sure to select all and hit M to, to kind of make sure I don't, because I, I try to ex, uh, exclude the I will insert this top vertices. I don't want to have a duplicate of vertices. So I'm just hit select all and uh, hit M to see uh, merge by distance. Oh yeah, see, I moved 32 vertices, which means I made some duplicated vertices in the top when I was using uh, exclude. Um, so anyway, let's do that. Select top faces and hit E scale. And uh, you, as you can see, if I do scale, the actual scale into the center uh, on, along the Z axis, I don't want that. So I'm going to hit Shift Z to do that, Just, which means it's only scale the top as a two. But unfortunately, this thing didn't work. I forgot to, to mention that. Well, this is a good time to learn as well. We're supposed I'm supposed to kind of do the, the face as the individual. Otherwise, I'm actually duplicating the entire cylinder. I don't want that. So I'm, I can just do that face, hit E, scale, and hit E, scale. Or you can do I, insert, whatever works for you. And then we're gonna do three. So we wanna select the top and at the back. And then we're gonna punch a hole, right? And then we're gonna use F3 to edge, bridge edge loops. Doom. Done. It's very nice. And then we are going to add a, a subsurface modifier, control two, and uh, definitely some support loop cut. So I'm gonna do control R just gonna scroll a bunch of these and then hit the uh, left cl click and then I want to do one more here and one more down here yeah. yeah cool yeah and you can see here the inside the tube that needs some support loops it doesn't look that neat uh, yeah again you won't see that anyway but uh, I, I need to get it done to in order to make it looks the best the way it's supposed to look. So it's gonna add a, a, a loop cut. Let's see here, see that? I, R, you can see that it's outside, inside, right? And I can just quickly just add in like five, should be fine. And then we gotta, 
another one need to tighten on the edge tighten it up on the edge so this should be fine and they're gonna do a, a right click shade smooth yeah it looks pretty nice yeah let's bring the things in yeah so we got that part done I know it's not really like having that texture yet, but we will do that in our texture session. So we will solve this problem for sure. No worries. Okay, so let's move on to the next. So we are going to kind of model the top part. It's pretty easy. Uh, this is another cylinder and the cylinder, but we the tricky part probably is how to uh, kind of getting this thing modeled HB and also there's kind of like a rectangular holes in that uh, that should be no problem but we will get it done by now from now uh, as you can see for this tiny metal part is supposed to stick inside this tube uh, we and one way you can either adding a, a new brand new cylinder to do that and to try to get the size properly correct or we can just use the the inside of this cylinders the geometries so we can just easily to replicate that right so we can do we can just do that because it will perfectly match right and we select these uh, the top circle for the in, in inside of this tube alt left click we don't need a lot we basically probably just need a a, a circle should be fine and then what we're going to do we're going to do uh, shift the D, kind of duplicate it, you know, with, and then then let uh, uh, right click, let it come back, and then hit P, separate. Look at making sure to look at it here. All right, hit P, separate, and then here's another cylinder is coming up. So, uh, X out the edit mode, and then we can go to here. So we can grab that. Yeah. So the next thing is, is we're gonna exclude the 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 circle and to make the tube. I know this tube is not really like perfect match with the reference. I, well, one of the reasons is, is this: this thing is not really like directly faced to what we're looking at. So it, because there, the the reference image is trying to to show you more details about the product, but we were just kind of eyeballing this and this should be fine Z and uh, should be fine and uh, and this is uh, there's no thickness on this one so we what we can do yeah you see when I actually duplicate duplicated this vertices uh, from the existing one the modifiers is coming with it so it's pretty nice right so I can do shade smooth what we want to do, we want to get some thickness. We can add a solid, a solidify modifier, and we can just kind of getting that thickness. We definitely do want to go wide. We're gonna outside. We can go inside, just a tiny bit. You know, nothing need to be over overly done. And then we are going to adding some vertices, support loops to get that thing tidied up, and of course, top. And yeah, should be fine with that. And another thing I wanted to check is the face, because usually at times when I duplicate a vertice or or something a loops loop cut, and the when I extrude, usually it's the wrong face. But so far from the just by looking at the uh, the outside, I don't think we are having some issue with the face. Uh, but we can always check you can if you don't set it didn't set up your 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 blender in the, the way as I did so we we can So you see I, I put in my my face orientation on the cube menu so you can actually check the face orientation if it looks blue Which means everything's facing outside. It looks correct. If it looks a red red that means the inside is out so you can do that. I believe it's in here, right? Oh, face orientation. Yeah, you can go down there and check, uncheck it to check. But yeah, I just added on the um, oh, added on the quick menu. So so far is the thing is good. And the next thing we're gonna do is this this top part. Uh, again, uh, 
I'm just going to be adding uh, let's do a shift S to get the oh sorry uh, shift right click to get my cursor 3d cursor in here so everything when I edit things on then it will appear in this cursor cursor so I can shift a and do the cylinder and see it's in there so I don't need to kind of drag it all the way up or anything I know it's probably off the center but there's a pretty cool tool that I wanted to let you guys know as well so it's called the align to align to so this one I can select that and that and I can just say align on the X and the Y so basically uh, you, you you needed to kind of select the 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 one you want to reference in the very last so, so you can see the orange uh, circle for that so basically the the, the red one was uh, going to align according to the the orange one uh, some of you probably don't have that in under your tab because you didn't um, enable the add-on so you can go to the add-on and you can just do, you can put just align align tools it's come with blenders it's a very useful tool and uh, you can you can start having that okay cool so let's get it that scale up and go to the edit mode let's go here drag it down here and uh, drag it down here and look it's here and we want to bevel this the thing okay and uh, here another loop cut I think one bevel should be fine for the lower case. And then go to the solid mode, and we are going to add a subsurface modifier, level two, again. Tap edit mode, hit E, scale inside, and uh, we can, well, for me, it doesn't really bother, and it's very small details. But for some of you, really want to have a quads in here, and we can do um, a delete of only face, and then we were gonna do a select again, and to, to hit Control F, you can just do grid fill, yeah. If you want to do so, but uh, for me, it's not a really big deal. I just show you we can get it done this way, shade smooth, and uh, sometimes you can just do. Uh, to smooth shape, uh, auto smooth. Yeah, I didn't turn on all these others, but yeah, if you're doing pretty good, um, you don't actually need to having this uh, auto smooth turned on. It just depends on how you dealing with the the whole thing. Well, so far so good, right? So far so good. And the next thing we want to do is get the H B going on here. And how can we do that? Well, basically, we're just going to kind of exclude something in and then to get produce a surface over here. The challenge we have here, and of course, first thing, this one is supposed to be in the center, in the middle. So I can do that according to that. And then <clears throat> you will need some geometries because we don't have any geometries working on in the cylinder, in this curved curvature surface. So what we will do, we can add a bunch of loop cut. I think should be fine and I'm trying to get a square shapes between each other trying to get it done uh, so next we are going to kind of select this, this is how pretty much how much we will need uh, or you can just select the one vertice and uh, you don't need you don't want to uh, select in the back so what we're going to do we're gonna alt to Z exit out the x-ray mode and we just select one vertice and then using my favorite shortcut keys hit control and uh, the plus and uh, minus in the number key so just kind of select that hmm, that's too much so gonna come back yeah it's about the right height yeah cool yeah again this is not a <laughs> A job shadowing stuff, you know, <laughs> and just showing you how to do get it done. So you definitely need 
some time to kind of get everything perfectly correct uh, so uh, I'm just going to show you how to get the thing finished uh, so cool so we have all these vertices uh, already selected what we can do here we can just kind of get that vertice top view and uh, and hmm, we need some support loops for sure so hit E scale down here right we get that done and hit E Y one and E Y another time and now you can see here's this kind of curve in here it's supposed to be flat right so what we can do here another shortcut key and is going to be hit s and hit the hit the y and zero you see here everything zero out on the y axis that's why we hit the y and zero okay and because we have subsurface modifiers curve uh, apply so we just have some kind of curve going on so we can do another quick support loops hit e y and then look at the front view we can actually scale down yeah so we've come out Ooh, yeah it's pretty nice feels like i'm probably coming in way too deep for that here but we can definitely fix that easily um select all that face right and uh we can just grab a y and come out yeah it looks nice looks nice okay so the next thing we what we need to do is the hb well there's a couple ways to do that um the first thing is the first way is that you can put a a plane and then just kind of outline the whole thing and to do beautiful shapes for to kind of getting that done but it takes hours uh, to get it done another way just using a, a tax but you need to get the tax have certain volume to get it uh, match with the HB uh, I think the font looks okay it's not something like fancy font uh, custom font uh, you couldn't find it if I test it for the blender and actually the default font works pretty well so what we can do here we can actually add a text uh, add a text yeah yeah and uh, you can see here is we have a giant text over here that's fine and then we're going to tap edit mode and then we can start tapping in so we're just going to do h and b definitely capital right cool and then next thing we're going to shrink this down and uh, i wanted to have this origin to go to the geometry so i'm going to uh to right click set our origin to geometry let's go, i can go there here object set or, origin to origin to, to geometry and then we're going to turn our x 90 degrees and face this way and just scale all the way down and grab that view over here zoom in we're going to tilt turn it 90 degrees hold control all right and uh, yeah oh and grab damn it was pretty close yeah yeah you see what i mean uh and uh as you can see it's in uh in the back end so we're gonna grab y coming here and uh you see we are not aligning align this hd hp inside of this box in the, the, the hole uh, and another another thing we wanted to do is that we can actually to select the thing attached to the perfect center of that or you can you know drag it and try and position it you know it, it should be fine but sometimes you want to have perfect accuracy of your position so what we can do here we can utilizing the 3d cursor to kind of help out uh, let's go to select the top cylinder and uh, we can see see since we are selecting the face if we, we are letting the cursor to to attach to the selections they're gonna go to the center or you can just kind of select this vertice you can hit shift s to cursor to select it snap the cursor 
to the center here. That's pretty nice, right? And then next thing, we will get set the uh, tap out the edit mode. We can select the HB. And since the center of this geometry is in the uh, this origin is in the center of geometry, so we can say uh, hit Shift S again. You can see selection to cursor. Then this selection is gonna go to the cursor where it belongs. So that should be perfect align with the center of the of the cube, right? Pretty neat, right? I know it's very useful, uh, very useful. Uh, t uh, tricks for when you're trying to get a thing properly right. So now we just need to bring this HB to the front. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Looks good. So so far HB this is this text font is text is still a text. It's like reader thing. It's a paper thing. Uh, what we can do here, we are going to 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 actually make it looks like a. Uh, mesh or shape, right? So good thing about this thing is we can easily convert a text to a curve. So we will do the right click, uh, convert to a curve. So you can see, let's come back. Earlier it was A, it means a text. Right now, if I do that, convert it to curve, now it's a curve, right? It's curve. So the next thing we can do is we can go to the uh, the geometry, I think, is bevel. Oh yeah, extrude, extrude, extrude. I think this this English terms, uh, words really like drive me crazy. So we can actually just extrude for a little bit. <coughs> then <coughs> then it has it's the volume, right? So then we can actually bring it in to our surface. We can kind of get a little bit more. Doesn't really matter. It can stick it in. Boom. So we got that done, right? Yeah, I know. I I've said it. I wanted to barrel everything, but that for this small details, I prefer just leave it. You know, we we have a, we can we can put a lot of energy into something more important. But so far, you know, we got that terms done, and uh, let's move on to the next. So this one. It looks pretty easy, but kind of tricky to make. So what we can do here, we are not only just modeling this pin part, we also need to have in this part of, of clips already. And you know, if you have ever hold a, a pencil, this thing's supposed to have some gaps between them, right? So what we can do here, we can actually just, again, utilizing the geometry we already have, and just kind of to build some of that from there. So I'm gonna adding a loop cut. Uh, I think I'm just gonna add it here. Here, you can just go up to do what you need to do. So basically, I'm adding some geometries here. Uh, what I'm, what I want to do. What I should I do is is to kind of utilizing this circle us uh, this cylinder geometries and to kind of build that. Let's do the face, or you can hit three to select that. Right, this entire loops of geometry. So we're gonna do Shift D again, kind of it's out there. Right click and hit P, select separate. And then this is the one. And then we need to hit the exile the edit mode. So here's the one. So we can we I'm you know I should to name the things of when we keep doing that, keep everything organized. So I'm just gonna do F2, I can just say pin. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now we have this vertice and uh, we are going to getting something out. Of this part and to to extrude something out. Since we select this side, we will do hit E X can extrude out. And then what I want to do definitely you will see this is kind of like a rectangular shape. So right now we are having a curve, but we don't want to do that. So we need to kind of zero out the vertices differences. So I'm going to 
hit s x zero right cool so we got that done so now we're going to continue extrude around axis and then e x just kind of bevel that okay cool and the next thing we are going to getting something out coming out from this side so we will do hit e down here z and uh, yeah so we got that part done and then we are going to extrude well you know what I think we are supposed to getting extrude from this side and then get it enough volume so what I'm going to do next we're going to add in a loop cut in here and then select this part right this face and extrude along the y along the axis 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 and here grab it down here yeah and then we're going to add a loop cut to kind of tie it up so far it's okay right so far it's all right and then we will actually need to have this volumes come down so what we we'll need to do here i'm going to adding another loop cut here and just going to kind of ex extrude the down here let's go easy it's all the way down here oops i think i hit the wrong button edit the mode yeah you can see that something's coming out and we're adding a support loops along the way to get anything tied up and definitely because the subsurface modifiers make these things looks too too much too off off too much <laughs> and tidying things up with some support loops yeah okay, okay well let's keep going so down here you know this is the kind of the tricky part is a curve you can do you can do whatever you want. You can just kind of e continue to do that and then rotate it uh, to getting things done. And just can you do that? But I choose to kind of using another tool that I I really really enjoyed it. You have, if you hit T on the sidebar, this is thing is called let's see, uh, no spin tool. Yeah. So basically how spin tool is, if I select this vertice or this face, if I had spin tool right here, and uh, if I'm going to, oh, see, Ooh. well, I think something going wrong is because the, uh, I'm, I'm, the, the spin tools only work with the vertice, uh, only working the center was the 3D cursor. Unfortunately, I didn't move my 3D cursor to the to the center over here. It's supposed to be in here. Think about it. It's going to be a circle spin, and the the 3D cursor is supposed to be here in order to have a pretty nice spin, right? But I didn't do that. So now what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to let the 3D cursors come back down here to get the work done. You know, I'm going to hit Shift right click to get the, the spinner. Yeah, and then. Now I can kind of spin things around. You see that beautiful curve, and for just for that uh, curve, I don't need that much of vertices. So steps. So we can actually just kind of dial it down. So I would say four should be fine. Yeah, five, four should be fine. And then we can we actually have that beautiful curvature. And for this guy, I'm going to kind of uh, to kind of tie it up to zero out. So S Z zero so we can have that easily 
And although you 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 although you already built this, but you still can manipulating this these, but it's, it's kind of retaining a really nice circle spin, and uh, I kind of enjoy that to have in over here. It's better, much better than than myself just kind of doing the screw uh, all the way here, right? Cool. Definitely, there are tons of different ways to solve one problem, but uh, that's just my version of problem solving. All right, hit E, extrude, and hit E, extrude. So here. I think we might need to to do another spin again because for the reference image it's just supposed to have something coming in here. Oh, well, let's let's see what I can do. I gonna again I'm gonna move the 3D cursor here, shift, right click, get here, and use the spin tool to get that spin. Ooh, that's a lot. I think three should be fine. Yeah, or even two, or oh, three, should be fine. Uh, okay, cool. So next thing we will see here is, it's kind of a decrease the volume of of the whole thing. So I don't want that happen. Uh, how can I get fixed, this thing fixed? So let's do, hit that, and let's drag to see what's going on. I think definitely some vertices is being overlapping. Let's see. See, a lot of time, problem solving is another thing uh, for what's going on. Let me just kind of drag this whole thing. Yeah. Fixing, be able to fix things would be as much more valuable than doing everything right at just beginning. Because when you know how to fix things, fix things, you add, basically you really know the stuff inside out. Yeah, it's a matter, the truth, uh, in any any skills. And because when the expert or the people who actually know what he's they are doing, they are coming to fix a problem. Let's see, we just gonna get the thing. Well, I think it's probably because the extra vertices to tighten up the mesh is actually causing this issue because this is a relatively small uh, corner and uh, we're trying to get things turned around perfectly yeah but we can get a fix we can get a fix right, it takes some time and patience Yeah, let's get a little bit of volume. I think it should be fine. And again, this is very small details in here, as you can see here. Yeah. A time, small details, worst time to tweak it. Yeah, so it's done. And I'm just going to hit that do a shade smooth and uh, and one of the issue we can see here is the because of curvatures and also I may see the face is that right orientation yeah face orientation is correct so I think probably all I need is to actually adding a loop cut on the edge to kind of tighten things up a little bit so far it's not too bad hit Q F and I'm gonna do that 
Yeah, see if I'm tidying things up, should be fine. Do I have another one oh, down here? Yeah. Cool. So I think we we get things done, right? Oh, no yet, no yet, because this, for this part, I need to mention that for the top part, we actually. We model this, but they are the exactly same size, so we are not really showing the thickness of the the pin circle. So what I can do here, I'm actually going to select the entire thing, including these thing. Let's do that, right? And we're gonna scale it up. S, shift the Z, so we don't want to scale. Let's see. Okay, so that looks okay to me. No, really, because it's gonna get it's actually too big to overlap the vertices. So I'm gonna sc scale S, shift Z, come down. Yeah, this should be fine. And then I'm gonna inside and the ex in exclude another vertice towards the inside to get some thickness going on. So and hit E. Yeah. Fine this time. Oops. Okay, what I can do here is the. Hmm. Let me think about it. What should I do to getting this vertice inside? How about. How about just the top vertices? I don't need to, to get that done. So, yeah, so for that, I'm going to hit the E scale down here. Just kind of close the top. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, perfect fine for me. And again, here, down here, E scale down here. Yeah, the purpose is you just want to close down it anyway. And then next thing we can do, hit the, these two loops. Alt, Shift, these two loops. Again, what we're going to do, F3, type bridge, edge loops, hit that. Okay, now we have that. Right, and another thing we can do here, is to getting this volume out, so we just need a very thin uh, a, a loop cut, kind of cutting the the edge, right? Yeah, there we go. Now that's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, and then we can even bevel. Yeah, yeah. Same thing here. We can add a loop cut. And then bevel. Yeah, not too bad. Now I can actually default call it done for the this modeling. So let me grab that. Yeah, think about look at that. Pretty nice, right? Cool. So f thank you for watching. Basically, it's about uh, how, how let's see how long it is already. Um, okay, is the uh, it's probably okay less than an hour good good so this is kind of what i wanted to achieve and uh, definitely there's a lot of stuff we're figuring things out along the way but this is kind of the result we're getting from this video uh, video uh, if you really enjoyed to watch this type of uh, modeling videos and um, and the how to do photorealistic rendering in uh, cgi in blender and uh, please consider subscribe my channel and i will producing more contents and to help you guys out uh, along this journey. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave the comments and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.